Amen. Amen. And so it is. It is so. God is the source of our strength. God is the source of our salvation. God is the source of our healing. God is the source of our life. God is the source. And this morning as we are gathered here for worship, there are people looking for the source. They're looking for the source on Facebook this morning. Some are looking for the source at Starbucks. Some are looking at the source on Netflix. There is a hunger for the source, the source of strength, the source of hope, the source of equality, and the source of justice. And in our scripture today, we meet a friend named Bartimaeus who is looking for the source. He is looking for the source for healing because he has lost his physical sight. In our scripture today, we, we don't know how long our friend Bartimaeus has been without sight. It's possible that he's been without physical sight since birth. It's also possible that something had happened and he had just lost his physical sight. So he is looking for that source, that source of healing in his life. In fact, he is looking for a miracle. We see him in our scripture today crying out for that miracle. Son of David, heir of David, have mercy on me. Have mercy on me. Like many in our world today, the crowd tried to shut him up. They wanted their focus to be on Jesus. It's why they were here. They were there for Jesus, not for this one who had lost his physical sight. And so they tried to silence him. And we know what that's like in our world today. Those who cry for healing, for justice to be listened and understood, oftentimes are silenced. But he refuses to be silenced. Heir of David, have mercy on me. Makes me wonder, how many of us truly are seen? How many of us are truly heard? Where it seems there are so many people moving by so quickly that it's difficult to know where our place is in this world. There are folks who have 2,000 friends on Facebook, and yet do they have a real friend, someone who will really care and really listen. In our scripture today, this one, our friend Bartimaeus, is calling out and crying out, will someone hear me? Will someone see me? Will someone know that I'm here? What's powerful is that though he has lost his physical sight, he clearly still has a spiritual sight. He is calling out in faith. He believes at the very core of his being that there is a source and he is going to find it. He will not be silenced. And even though the crowd tries to shut him up, we see one of the most powerful moments in the entire scripture. Jesus stopped. In a world that rushes by, we need somebody to stop. How many people rush by the person at the corner of 5th and K asking for some help, asking for someone to extend a hand of compassion and care? How many times do people move by and nobody stops? <laughs> How many times do we go into a day where there is so much that we don't even take time to stop? In this scripture, Jesus very powerfully stops. He pauses. He takes a breath. And when Jesus takes that breath, it's like the breath of the Holy Spirit. The crowd is silenced. Jesus extends that breath. And it's like there's this release of power and the Spirit. And then Jesus, stopping and breathing, actually sees Bartimaeus. 
Jesus looks at Bartimaeus, and it's like Bartimaeus is being seen for the first time in his life. Even though Bartimaeus does not have his vision restored yet, there has to be a sense that he knows that something is shifting, that something is happening. At that moment, I think he knows that there is a miracle emerging. He, he can feel it. The atmosphere is shifting around him, and the atmosphere is shifting in him. He is seen for the first time, seen for who he is. I think in that moment when Jesus looks at Bartimaeus, he sees someone who has been uniquely created by God. And he sees someone who is ready to live into the fullness of who he was designed to be. So this important moment where, where Jesus stops becomes a moment where a miracle emerges. And the entryway to that miracle is a powerful question. Bartimaeus, what do you want me to do for you? Makes me stop and think. If God asks us that question, and we really believe that God would answer it, then what would we ask for? If we really trusted, and thank you for bringing up that trust issue, uh, Deidre, if we really trusted, and we're really willing to risk on God, what risk would we take? I mean, Bartimaeus has thrown his coat down already. We don't know. He maybe couldn't have afforded another one. He, he risked it being embarrassed before the crowd. What kind of risk would we take on God if we really trusted God? He asked that question to Bartimaeus. What do you want me to do for you? And Bartimaeus said, I want to see. I want to see. And Jesus says, go and follow. Your faith has brought you sight. We see this amazing miracle. And what's amazing here as well is that Bartimaeus does not just hold that miracle inside himself and go, wow, look what God has done for me. Scripture says that he took that miracle and then went and followed Jesus. This is where I wish there was more to the story because I have a feeling that Bartimaeus became an amazing, amazing advocate for equality and for justice. I believe that he took the physical sight that had been restored and combined it with the spiritual sight that was there all along and did some amazing things in our scriptures. I believe that he became one who witnessed to the life of a miracle-working God. I can see Bartimaeus going from that point forward, following Jesus and saying to person after person, are you ready for a miracle? Are you ready for a miracle? And I believe that question is being asked for us in this place as well today. Are you ready for a miracle? Yes. Okay, that sounded a little bit like the nine o'clock crowd, not, uh, you know, uh, which is a wonderful, it's a, it's a place for silence. But what I would say today, MCCDC, 11 o'clock, are you ready for a miracle? Yes. Are you really ready for a miracle? Yes. Okay. I believe that God has heard your answer. And I believe that Jesus is standing right here in our midst today. And I believe that Jesus is asking each one of us individually a question. And that is, what do you want me to do for you? Can you picture Jesus with you right now asking you that question directly? And how do you answer that question? What do you want Jesus to do for you today? Now, don't be too small on your request. <laughs> don't say, I just want to feel a little bit better. I got a little hitch in my get along, so I want a little more get along. Ask for something bald. Jesus is asking you, what do you want me to do for you today? 
Does anyone have the answer to that question for themselves? And is there someone who'd be willing to maybe share what it is that you're asking Jesus to offer you today so that we can pray for you and with you for that prayer to be answered? Yeah. Peace of mind. Peace of mind. In our world, peace of mind is a miracle indeed. <laughs> The healing of lungs, physical healing. Yes. That'd be it. Healing of lungs. Anyone else? What do you want Jesus to do for you today? Yeah. He said, heal my body. The healing of body. Jesus is a healer of body, mind, and spirit. Is there one more who would like to share how they would answer that question? Yeah. Financial security. Financial security. All right. All right. Bring my daughter back from drugs. Amen. God cares about our real lives. God cares about the people we love. God cares about our bodies, our minds, our souls. Our God is a miracle-working God in the face of addiction, in the face of our physical challenges and our spiritual hopes. Okay, we'll continue this Oprah moment here and take it to a different, different place. Uh, by the way, check under your seat. Someone has won a car today. <laughs> Actually, I'd like us to reframe that question a little bit. We've looked at what Jesus wants to do for us as individuals. I also believe that Jesus is standing before us as a congregation and is asking this question. MCCDC, what do you want me to do for you? So if there was any prayer, Mama C's already got her hand up. MCC needs, and all MCCs need to be fixed of their intolerance of other people, other things, and each other. Amen. Amen. Jesus wants us to be a body that lives our values. We have an amazing statement of faith, amazing values that call us to live them. Someone else. Yes, Amani. Uh, as a church, the courage to do the right thing. Amen. That Jesus would give us the courage to do the right thing as a congregation. What comes to me is that we indeed would be a place that really listens and really cares. Because there's too few places that really listen and really care. That there would be a place right here at Fifth and Ridge that would offer that care and that compassion to our world. Someone else who would offer a prayer of what they would like Jesus to do, for God to do, through MCCDC, through us as a congregation. Okay. We come in here and we love each other and we're close to each other, but do we carry that outside? So my wish would be including definitely for myself for the love that I share with all of my members here for me to learn how to do that outside of here. Amen. So to take what's inside out. MCCDC, I believe that indeed Jesus is standing in our midst. And as our friend Bartimaeus has shown us, God listens and God cares. God hears our cries and God is ready to work in us and through us from the inside out. Jesus is ready. Are we ready for Jesus? Amen and amen.